What's going on guys? It's your boy Scrub here back again with another video. Today I've got a story time that was sent in to me about a spoiled kid that went ballistic because he was told he had to do a scavenger hunt for a grade and ended up like destroying his school. Regardless, I figured it would be something y'all enjoy. It seems right up our alley. So uh, yeah, without further ado, let's get into the story time. Arrivederci. Alright, we meet again. Anyways, guys, as I said, this was a story time that was sent in to me by a subscriber. And this particular subscriber had one of the classes where he sat in, like, the table made out of desks where you kind of are all facing each other and it's a group of four people. And, you know, he didn't really know the people he sat with too well, but obviously whenever there was a group where they were together. And the teacher came in on this particular day and said, Alright, guys, instead of the normal, you know, book lesson, today I've decided to do something fun and I've organized a scavenger hunt for you guys to do today now you know I haven't been in school for a bit so like maybe things have changed but that being said I feel like a scavenger hunt is a pretty fun way to spend the school day you know compared to like doing worksheets in a classroom I feel like having a teacher go out of his way to set up a scavenger hunt and then you know let you guys do it, it's a pretty cool teacher move it beats sitting in a class all day apparently though that's not the universal opinion because one of the people at this subscribers table that we're gonna name Gerald for the rest of this story time was apparently disgusted by scavenger hunts all right think of something really disgusting you know a, a tomato with some mold on it your grandma's feet whatever it is you need to think of to maybe dry retch a little bit that's how disgusted Gerald was at the fact that his teacher even suggested that he do this scavenger hunt all right which to me makes no sense I didn't realize that people hated scavenger hunts with a burning passion regardless Gerald kind of blurts out you're gonna make me do what? I, I don't want to do that. That's so stupid. Why would I want to spend any of my time doing a scavenger hunt? That's not what school is about. I'm going to learn nothing from this. What's the point of being a teacher if you're not going to teach? And he is just going on this rant about how, you know, this teacher is lazy for getting, or setting up a scavenger hunt, which I feel like is the exact opposite of what a person would be to go out of their way to set up a scavenger hunt. And on top of that, he's yelling how he's not going to learn anything from this, and this is terrible. And obviously, everyone else in the classroom is confused confused and looking at him like what is wrong with you that's such a random thing to say and on top of that everybody else in the class wants to do the scavenger hunt to avoid doing normal class work usually people don't get mad about the fact that they're not going to have to sit in a class doing boring stuff you know usually the scavenger hunt is appreciated but whatever Gerald kind of does his rant and the teacher's looking at him kind of letting him finish and after he stops yelling the teacher is like look the scavenger hunt is the assignment for the day it is what it is Gerald you know if if you really hate scavenger hunts that much and you despise it, then you're more than welcome not to participate in the scavenger hunt, but you're going to get a zero on the assignment because it is for a grade. So if you really hate it that much, you know, you despise it by all means. You're more than welcome to protest the assignment and take a zero. But if you want a good grade, then you just have to do the scavenger hunt. It is what it is. That's what you're doing today. And before anyone's like, wow, the teacher was mean for saying that. No, he wasn't, dude. Imagine you went out of your way to organize a scavenger hunt instead of a boring assignment and then Gerald started freaking out. Would you cancel all your hard work? No. You'd be like, Gerald, deal with it. You know, you don't always want to play the board game Clue, but guess what? You are today. It's scavenger hunt time. You know, if you want to take a zero, that's your decision. Regardless, though, the teacher said that the rest of the class kind of assumed that it was over with. Gerald would just do it and get it done with. But uh, I guess in Gerald's mind, that was more of a challenge than anything. Because he replies to the teacher and is like, I'm going to make you regret making me do the scavenger hunt, which is probably the weirdest threat that that teacher has ever heard in his life. As far as things that you expect to be like threatened with, you know, hey, give me my money or you're going to regret it. Like that's a little bit normal. If you make me participate in this scavenger hunt for a grade, then you're going to regret it. Has to be up there as one of the least threatening threats ever made. And the teacher, obviously not intimidated by Gerald being like, if you make me do this, then you'll regret it. Looks at Gerald and says, you know what? I'll take my chances. If you end up uh, making me regret it, then so be it. Obviously, by the end of this story time, maybe the teacher would have regretted it a little bit, but I don't blame him for saying it in that moment. Because as a teacher, you can't let a kid punk you like that and on top of it, he didn't know that Gerald was insanely nuts and meant it. Whatever, at that point, the class kind of quiets down and the teacher goes about handing out this worksheet that's for the scavenger hunt, you know? And basically, the instructions were that you needed to go around the school, find
find the answers to these questions with your group, which was the table you were with, and, you know, write them down and turn it back in by the end of the class period, and if most groups didn't finish, they would continue it the next day. Pretty simple instructions, you know, nothing that wild, but the one thing that everybody is kind of like crap about at this particular table that sits with Gerald is the fact that, you know, Gerald is now in their group and they have to do the scavenger hunt with him. Anyways, the subscriber is like, all right, awesome, I'm in a group with Gerald, this is gonna suck, because we're gonna have to go around and do this scavenger hunt that's for a grade, and he's just gonna complain the entire time. And before they even have a chance to talk about it, Gerald just starts going off about how they are gonna have to do it on their own, because he's not gonna help them, he thinks this is a stupid assignment, so, you know, even though he's in their group, he's not going to help, blah 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 blah. And the subscriber in his mind is like, this is exactly why I was not stoked about being in a group with Gerald, as I knew he was gonna do this. And so him and the rest of the group are kind of like, all right, Gerald, that's fine. You don't have to help us. That's okay. But we're not going to let you get credit for our work unless you help, you know, which to me is pretty standard. If you decide to opt out of the group project and not do anything, then like, we're just going to drop your name from the group project. You get a zero. We don't. But I guess in Gerald's mind, how dare they even suggest that? He was sitting at their table. So by default, it just meant that he instantly had to get credit for all the work that he was protesting doing. <laughs> what? Just because I don't want to do it means that I don't deserve the credit for it? Are you serious? Like, I thought this was a teamwork thing. You guys would really do a teammate that bad? I mean, I don't know if he's self-aware enough, but the words, just because I don't want to do it means I don't deserve the credit came out of his mouth. It's like, I mean, uh, kinda. Anyways, he's kind of going off about how, like, he deserves to get credit for it even if he doesn't help because he's sitting there. And one of the other people at the table interrupts him and says, listen, what you said earlier, that's exactly what we mean. If we're gonna do all the work, you don't get any of the credit. That seems fair to everybody here but you. Which everybody else kind of agreed on, and Gerald was like, you guys agree with him about this? and they both individually were like, yeah, I think it's insane that you expect us to do all the work and you to get all the credit when you're not going to do anything. That's insane. That's just not how this uh, this little game is played, big dog. You got to at least try to help with the group project. Maybe you take the man in the van status. You know how every superhero has the man in the van leading him on the map? Maybe that's your position on the scavenger hunt. But yeah, you got to do something, you know. And when they tell him that like he's not going to get any credit unless he does the work, dude, Gerald's face just contorts into some like the look of someone who just smells something horrible. Imagine you just found out that like rotting eggs have been in your fridge for a month via scent. Like you're smelling it for the first time. Just disgust. You just found out grandpa's a con artist. You're just sad. And you know, Gerald, after like making the stink face, starts to talk about, well, I'll have you know that the idea of working and walking around the school doesn't really make me comfortable. So I'd really prefer if you guys did all the work. Because, you know, it would just really, really not be nice of you guys to put me in a position where I'd be uncomfortable, right? You know, oh yeah, does the idea of walking around the school and working make you uncomfortable so you can't do it? At that point, the subscriber is getting annoyed, so he looks at Gerald and he's like, yeah, it doesn't make me comfortable either. Do you really feel like I want to be running around the school doing a scavenger hunt? Sometimes you just gotta do a scavenger hunt that you don't wanna do, man. And if you don't wanna do it, that's fine. I guess that is your choice, but then you gotta take the zero. Like, I'm not gonna do do all the work for you, Gerald. You fought with the teacher. He's making you do it. We're going to make you do it too. There's no way that we're, you're going to get credit for this unless you come help. And so the subscriber kind of yells at him for a little bit, something along those lines, everything I just said. And Gerald starts to go on an unhinged rant about how the subscriber and the teacher have to be in cahoots to make him angry today and make him embarrass himself, which is hilarious to me, dude. Imagine the teacher walking up to the subscriber who sent this to me before class and they're like, all right, you know, we all know that Gerald hates scavenger hunts. Like the mere mention of a scavenger hunt makes him want to punch a baby. So let's just troll him and make him do a scavenger hunt. Like, I don't think the teacher thought that far ahead. It's not normal for people to hate scavenger hunts with such a passion. Regardless, the subscriber tells him, like, Gerald, there's no conspiracy going on here, all right? Me and the teacher didn't meet up and talk about how to make you angry. All that I'm saying is that I don't want to do all your work because you're too lazy to do it. It's annoying, you know? Like, no amount of you saying you don't want to do the scavenger hunt is going to make us do it and then put your name on it. Quit being lazy and just decide to do it. And obviously, that's all this boils down 
down to is him being lazy, right? He just doesn't want to go do the scavenger hunt. But Gerald can't take that. No, no, no. So he just starts another rant about how, like, if everyone thinks he's lazy, then he's going to do something that'll make the entire school know that he's not lazy. And they'll just have to wait and see what he decides to do. But they're going to regret calling him lazy. And he goes to run off away from the group. I think in his mind, you know, it was going to be this big mysterious, like, <gasps> where did Gerald go? He ran away from the group. The only problem was Gerald wasn't exactly like speed racer out here. And so he tries to run off quickly. It's very not quick because A, he runs slow. And on top of that, the run just kind of looks funny. And so they're kind of watching him run away from the group because they called him lazy. And now he's going to like get revenge on the school or something. And they see him run up the stairs and into the bathroom, kind of like on the upper level of their courtyard above the lunchroom. And they're like, all right, I guess if that's going to teach us a lesson, that's fine. At least he's not bugging us anymore. And for the most part, they just assume that he had gone to like sit in the bathroom for the rest of class and ignore them and just not really deal with it. So they're like, all right, it's just one less annoying thing we have to deal with. Let's go do the scavenger hunt. So they start walking around the school doing the assignment the way that they were expected to. And they get it done pretty quickly, mainly because Gerald's not there to be complaining and yelling about it the whole time. And it wasn't like it was an insanely complex assignment. You know, it's a scavenger hunt the teacher made so that way most people could do it. It's not the national treasure stealing the Declaration of Independence or anything. After about 30 minutes, though, they're all done and they start walking back to that class to turn everything in. But the path that they have to walk on this class, they have to go back through the courtyard and past the stairs where Gerald had ran upstairs into those uh, bathrooms above the lunchroom. And so that's just like part of their path. So they're walking back, kind of talking about the assignment. And like I said, the way it's laid out, this is going to start to be important. It's basically like a courtyard layout. So there's two sets of stairs on either end of the courtyard going up. And on either end of the top of those stairs are, are bathrooms and underneath one bathroom is the lunchroom and underneath one bathroom on the other side is the gymnasium. Well, they come around the corner and they look at the stairs above the lunchroom. And when they do, they just see water pouring down those stairs, almost like somebody put a hose at the top to just keep it running. And so obviously they're kind of like, whoa, what's going on? Why does it look like the courtyard is starting to flood? And as they start to pay closer attention, that's when they start to like hear the noise as well from the other side of the courtyard. And as they start to pay attention to the noise, they start looking as well. And they see janitors up like by the doors of the bathroom banging on it saying, open up, open up, turn off the water. You're flooding the school, you know, and like they start to walk over to get a closer look as you do, obviously, whenever there's a situation like this going on your first thought isn't let me go the opposite direction like oh someone's flooding the bathroom and the janitors are trying to get in and turn it off this could be interesting to watch grab the popcorn that's more of the reaction i expect but immediately this group is like i bet you gerald has locked himself in the bathroom and is now trying to flood the school to teach us a lesson which, yeah, is about as, as stupid as it sounds, dude. Like, let me get this straight. You didn't like the fact that the teacher gave you a scavenger hunt. So in your brain, you were like, meh, I should flood the school. I mean, whatever floats your boat, Gerald, but that just seems like a little bit of an overreaction. You could have just done the scavenger hunt and, like, gone to the next class an hour later. Now you're just getting yourself in a tricky situation. As they're getting closer to the stairs that are flooding, though, they see how bad it is. There's literally a pool of water on the stairs, the bottom of the stairs. It's running down everywhere. There's like a huge pool of water under the door. And it's like to the point where they can hear the water running from the bathroom because it's all the sinks, you know, all the toilets. Basically, anything that can flood water is currently clogged and flooding water out of the bathroom that they can't get into. And out from under the door is just coming water, right? And so they're kind of standing there watching it and the janitors are trying to get in and now that they're a little bit closer they can hear Gerald on the other side of the door laughing like a maniac being like I'm not gonna turn off the water and the janitors trying to reason with him like no please turn off the water everything's flooding and he's like giggling at the fact that everything is flooding saying he's not gonna turn off the water honestly man some pure evil villain moment like this had to have been Joker's or Gerald's Joker moment you know like he didn't get his homework done for free so he had to flood the school instead when the 
janitors are begging you to please stop because they're going to have to, like, clean up a flooded school. You just start laughing at them for thinking that you were going to stop. Like, that is some straight-up Joker moment situation right there. Y'all thought the Joker movie was intense, you know? Just wait for the Gerald version. Every actor that does the Joker tries to go all, like, method actor. There's no method acting here. Gerald just is the Joker, dude. Anyways, I really love just imagining the thought process. Like, he really was just had to have sat there for a moment and decided that flooding school was a good idea. Which, I just don't really understand how you come to that conclusion, dude. Like, okay, you ran away from the group of people you're supposed to do the project with because they don't want to do your work. You're going to teach them a lesson or whatever. You ran into the bathroom. So that's the last time that the subscribers saw him up until this point, right? So after that, he walked into the bathroom and said, mm, Man, nobody's going to do my homework for me. I have to do this stupid scavenger hunt. I hate everything. Life is the worst. Why does nobody want to do all my homework for me? Why can't they just do it? This is ridiculous. I hate it here. And then while he was having that little rant to himself, he looked up, like saw himself in the mirror, right? And straight up out of a cartoon, like the angel and devil popped up on his shoulder. The angel, come on, just do the work. It's a scavenger hunt it's not that bad it it could be worse you could be sitting in a classroom you know just consider the fact that the teacher put in this hard work to organize it for you and maybe just do it and he's like ah shut up shut up that angel that's stupid no i don't want to listen to that the devil on the other shoulder though is like you remember christmas time do you remember home alone do you remember the wet bandits how about we flood the school to teach everyone a lesson about making us do scavenger hunts? And then, like, you know, instead of saying, no, that's ridiculous, decided that that really was the best course of action and he might as well just go through with it, dude. He had to have been inspired by Home Alone, right? Like, how else do you come up with the idea to flood a building to piss people off? You know, it has to have come from a movie of some sort, and that's the only one I can think of where this is what the bad guys do, is flood stuff. I'm sure there is other movies, like, I I'm making a joke, but honestly, man, I just love the idea of him sitting there in the bathroom like no you're right this is a good idea if i flood the school that'll teach everybody not to mess with me and make me do a scavenger hunt ever again all right guys i'm gonna interrupt the video for just one second i'm going ahead and posting all my story times the day after they're posted on youtube on this show on spotify i'm gonna go ahead and put the link at the top of the description but if you want to listen offline you know or just without gameplay i'm keeping this one super updated so like i said link in the top of the description if you want to listen offline i'd appreciate it Thanks. I just don't really understand what his plan was because like, all right, even if hypothetically that teaches everybody not to ever give you a scavenger hunt again, like you did just flood your own school, you know, like, oh, I hate scavenger hunts so much. I better destroy my school. Big brain, 500 IQ play, punish yourself because of a scavenger hunt. Regardless though, you know, they're watching this like eyes wide open because Gerald's just straight up acting like the Joker vibing, doing his thing. And as they're standing there, they really can't believe what they're seeing. Like, obviously they knew that Gerald had been mad at them for not doing his homework, but they didn't expect it to, like, lead to him trying to do a mini Noah's Ark flood on the rest of the school. Really just trying to damage the school as much as possible because he had to do homework. Like, call me crazy, but I think everyone hates homework. Nobody likes doing it. It's just a reality. Imagine if every time your, like, boss told you to do something you didn't want to do, you just flooded the business. You know, I know school's not a job but like same principle right anyways at that point the school cop finally shows up to like help the janitors get in and he starts banging on the door saying that you know if you don't come out i'm gonna kick it in like now's your chance to not get in a lot of trouble blah 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 otherwise i'm gonna force my way in and something that i've always thought is weird at like schools is that the, the bathroom doors are usually like metal I, I don't know if the other schools were the same way so obviously you'd think at that point you know even if the door's metal or whatever Gerald would at least come to the realization that the gig is up. The school's flooded. They're not messing around. You know, the cops here are saying he's going to kick in a metal door if you don't come out. It's probably time to just give up. But no, Gerald on the other side, still laughing maniacally at the fact that he's flooded the school, starts screaming like, go ahead, loser, go ahead, come to try get me, I don't care, you won't do anything. And obviously, the, the school cop's not too happy about that, so he starts kicking the door, but it's a metal door, so it doesn't really do a whole lot, you know? And now Gerald is laughing even harder on the other side. He's like, wow, good job, way to go, man, you're so much closer to getting me than you were before. And listen, one thing that, like, I, I don't know if every door is like this, but it was 
was convenient that this door was, even though the door was metal, the hinges were on the outside of the door. So even though Gerald had blocked the door, they couldn't get in. They could just like take the door off the hinges. And at that point, you know, janitors, teachers, the cop, whoever was there, they all start looking for a tool to just take the door off the hinges and just get it off that way. You know, he can't be hiding behind the door if the door no longer is on the hinges. That was kind of the thought of it. But, you know, as they're searching around, scrambling, trying to find it, there's a lot of chaos, and Gerald is on the other side of the door in the chaos, laughing like an evil villain having himself a fantastic time. You know the part of, like, you know, the superhero movie where the villain's plan is kind of working, and he's, like, watching all the bad stuff happen, and he's like, ha ha ha! Ha ha ha! This is my plan all along! That's kind of how Gerald sounds on the other side of the door as all the chaos of, like, people trying to figure out what's going on happens, figuring out where the tools are to get the door off the, the hinges. And during all of this chaos, you know, the flood's just getting worse. I don't know if the janitors had misplaced the tool, if it wasn't something they had often, but it takes about 15 minutes for the teachers to end up getting back with the tool to take the door off the hinges. And in that amount of time, a an insane amount of water continues to flood down the stairs and flood the school. Because like I said, he had clogged all the toilets and kept flushing them. He had all the sinks clogged and just kept pressing the buttons. There's literally water pouring down the stairs and like the teachers are running around trying not to slip and fall looking for everything they need to fix this. Seriously, I feel like the water flow at one point was so much that it was described as like the potential ninth wonder of the world, you know, just a magnificent waterfall in the middle of nowhere falling. Wow, nature is incredible. Only differences except like, you know, most waterfalls are from nature. This one's just from some crazy kids smacking the sink button every 15 seconds. Anyways, finally the teachers managed to get like the hinges off and they all storm in there like the school cop the janitors you know and they're stomping in there and you can like hear the splashes of their feet when they go in because it's just flooded you know and as they go into the bathroom and go around the corner the group that was watching them can't see exactly what's going on right but what they do hear is Gerald laughing maniacally and all the adults screaming like get him and then a bunch of what sounds like someone trying to grab somebody and out of the bathroom comes Gerald dude which is obviously not what they're expecting all the angry adults went in to capture him and out comes Gerald and so Gerald runs out of the bathroom covered in water just like covered in it obviously he'd been in a room that was flooding and he just starts sprinting down the hallway away from the bathroom still laughing the entire time like this is hilarious you'd think by this point the reality might have been setting in that like he's about to get expelled you know he flooded the school no he probably was so spoiled he thought his parents would somehow manage to get him out of this but he's gotten out of the bathroom though teachers have noticed he's out yet and he's just sprinting down laughing like an evil villain and at that point the school cop comes out of the bathroom covered in water and starts trying to like run after him and they're assuming that he got covered in water too by like trying to tackle Gerald in the flooded bathroom or something and as he starts to sprint after Gerald obviously a lot of the hallway has become flooded there's just water everywhere and he ends up slipping so Gerald is now like kind of on his way out of the school with nobody that he thinks between him and the door and so when Gerald sees the cop fall he literally throws his hand up and starts screaming like wet bandit strike again you know he feels like he got one over on everybody no way he's going to get caught and he's near an exit door and it just so happens that he slams it open and he starts to run out and for some reason just by horrible luck on Gerald's part there's a teacher on the other side who just grabs his shirt because he assumes that he's trying to make a break from trouble or something right and so he, he's caught and so the teacher's got his shirt and Gerald immediately, now that the teacher has him, changes his tune. The whole evil villain laughing, everything's hilarious thing drops. And he looks at the teacher who has his shirt and he's like, I didn't do anything, I swear. There was somebody else in the bathroom who flooded it. They locked me in the bathroom. I, wouldn't, I wasn't allowed to leave. Oh my gosh, it was a ghost. It was a ghost. Just like saying any excuse he can think of to this teacher about why he didn't do it. And obviously it was just hilarious to the people that had watched the situation because like, you know, when Gerald wasn't going to be in trouble, it's hilarious laughing like there's no tomorrow you know, sounding like a hyena or a hyena with a chainsaw. But he's just like on the other side of the door, just, you know, torturing the poor janitors. They're going to have to clean up this flood. As soon as the teacher gets him though, oh my gosh, it was, it was the ghost, man. I'm telling you, it was a ghost. Yeah. Yeah. The, the plumber ghost, you know, of the school that hates us. Obviously the teacher hadn't even said anything yet, you know, and just instantly starts going with the ghost excuse. 
At that point, though, the bell rang, so people start coming out into the hallway and just seeing all of this chaos, and they don't want the kids to see all this. They have to clean up the mess. They have to do a whole lot before it's safe to just let everybody start running back out in the hallway. So they start ushering everybody back to class, you know, and the group that had been watching this go down obviously gets caught up in that and gets kind of ushered back to class. And as they get back to class, everybody's talking about it. You know, what happened? What 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 what, what went down? Obviously, a rumor like this is going to spread like wildfire because it's not every day somebody just decides to try to flood the school you know so rumors are swirling and the people that actually saw what went down are just like none of these rumors make any sense literally one of the rumors that was going around about why the flood happened had nothing to do with Gerald right but instead they assumed that the Illuminati had broken into the school and for some reason decided to flood it which you know I don't know why that was the route in their head that they jumped to to make a rumor because like it's pretty obvious that wouldn't happen why would the Illuminati be wasting their time flooding a high school it makes no sense as to why they would even be there imagine the Illuminati board meeting you know it's like all the billionaires all the presidents everybody in charge of the woods or the the world not the woods I guess technically the woods but also the world and they're like hey man I know we're destabilizing Cuba at 7 p.m. but I was thinking at one we could just go flood this random school for no reason they won't even know it's the Illuminati actually no we should tell them it's the Illuminati but uh yeah I just feel like we should go flood this random place and everybody in the board meeting you know like all the billionaires are like yeah that's a genius idea that makes sense to me anyways obviously people are just kind of saying whatever about the rumor and the subscriber had gotten put back into the class he was in before so the teacher that organized the scavenger hunt and so he's kind of talking to the teacher about everything because obviously the teacher didn't really know what had gone down and he's like it was insane you know the janitors were banging on the door trying to get in and Gerald was on the other side laughing and the teacher kind of stops him when he mentioned it was Gerald and turns white as a ghost he goes wait a second it was Gerald that flooded the school like you're telling me that Gerald was involved in this and obviously the subscriber just kind of confirms it because like yeah it was Gerald you know he was the one that flooded it and the teacher's like do you think the administration is going to get mad at me and they're like well why would they get mad at you and he starts talking about how Gerald had said he was going to get the teacher in trouble and so maybe because it had happened during the scavenger hunt this was going to get blamed on him and you know that didn't end up happening thankfully but like at that point it kind of clicked what Gerald's overarching evil plan had kind of been in the first place I guess somehow in Gerald's mind it made sense that like the teacher was somehow going to get blamed for him deciding to flood the school I mean that's not what happened thank Thankfully, but like, I guess in his mind, you know, the administration would look at all of this that went down and was like, <gasps> this teacher made him do a scavenger hunt. Obviously, that's the reason he was pushed to flooding the school. Without the scavenger hunt, this would have never happened. Fire the teacher. How are they going to hold this random dude accountable for flooding the school that literally had nothing to do with it, right? Like, he was not the person flooding the bathroom, Gerald. You can't really blame someone for that if they had nothing to do with it. That's like, you know, d d speeding in a car and when the cop pulls you over and it's like why are you speeding being like well you made me speed actually it's like well I mean not really you know it's, it's not really how this works I would not have flooded the bathroom if this teacher didn't make me do a scavenger hunt it's like yeah but the teacher didn't tell you to do the scavenger hunt he didn't provide instructions and tell you to do it you know good one Gerald like how is the teacher gonna get in trouble dude they literally caught Gerald flooding everything how would have that have been the teacher's fault unless he literally gave him instructions on how to do it anyways obviously it backfired teacher didn't end up getting in trouble for Gerald's shenanigans however Gerald did end up getting expelled which I mean I can't really say I'm surprised dude you kind of leave them with no choice when you flood the entire school and then when they're like hey please let us in to stop flooding the school you just laugh at them and make fun of them and for like an hour they have to go get tools to rip the door off the hinges yeah you're probably gonna get expelled like you know I don't really know what the message they're sending to the school would be if he just showed back up on school like Monday everybody there is like oh I can basically start a riot and nothing will happen that's lit even though they did end up getting rid of him it didn't change the fact that like kids ended up making memes about this which obviously they're going to bro if someone floods your school it's going to become a joke at the school whenever teachers would give like too much homework or anything an anonymous letter would be written to the teacher about how like if they didn't stop the school was going to flood and blah 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 and the teachers wouldn't stop giving homework off of that like don't get it wrong the notes didn't do anything but you know it was just kind of the type of shenanigans people would get up to afterwards 
And honestly, man, Gerald did become, like, a little bit of a folk villain. I won't say folk hero, because people weren't like, yo, that Gerald guy was lit. But people would be like, remember when Gerald flooded the school? That was crazy. Overall, I just thought this was some next-level spoiled kid behavior. You know, flooding a school instead of doing homework or a scavenger hunt is, like, a pretty, uh, pretty much the largest aversion to work I've ever heard of. You have to basically think work is the most evil thing ever existed to decide that, like, flooding the school is somehow a better alternative alternative to just doing the homework. And all of this over a scavenger hunt, like one of the most fun things you could possibly get a sign that still work. Imagine what he would have done if it was a Scantron test, dude. He probably would have tried to burn it down instead. Like a, a real test would have absolutely melted his brain, man. No reason to get mad at this type of easy work. I do say though, the teacher who caught him by accident, you know, just grabbed his shirt, probably did feel like a secret agent for a pretty long time afterwards. Like he had just wiggled from the hands of justice and there he was, perfect timing to catch him right before he escaped. Gary the Geometry Teacher, national hero, baby. That's what we need more of, Gary the Geometry Teacher. Anyways, other than that, they uh, only had one staircase at the school for about a month. Obviously, the other one had flooded, had a bunch of water damage, and it took about a month for them to fix it. But, you know, during that time, it was a pain at the school because everybody had to just, like, use one stair. But, uh, yeah, it did end up getting fixed, and overall, I just thought the story was something you guys would enjoy. Moral of the story, though, don't flood the school to get out of of work it's probably just not worth it you're gonna end up with a huge repair bill probably and getting expelled and it's just also not cool to flood a school all right you shouldn't need a reason anyways guys that's gonna do it for the video hopefully you enjoyed if you did enjoy it i'd really appreciate you taking a second to press the like button let me know in the comment section down below what you thought this is one of my longest videos in a bit so if you could comment the word uh flood down below i'd really appreciate it just so uh i know y'all like the longer videos other than that if you really want to help me out i'll put a link to the intro song down below along with a link to my podcast the scuffed cast or you could use code scrubby at the g fuel checkout to get a discount on g fuel help me out at the same time and of course subscribe if you're new turn on notifications to never miss another one and the last link that's going to be down in the description is a link to the merch store so uh feel free to go check that out and get yourself a t-shirt it's the coolest merch to ever exist not that i'm biased and uh yeah on that note guys that'll do it don't get anyone pregnant if you do make sure they're hot and i'll see you guys next time I'm out. Peace.